Hello, today we are going to perform a clean installation of Windows 7 in a VMware Player virtual environment. To start, we're going to launch VMware Player, so we'll double click the icon located on my desktop. When VMware Player opens, you will see that there's two different columns. A left hand column, which identifies the virtual machines already present, in which case I have one, and the right hand column which gives you additional navigation. The top navigation is create a new virtual machine. That's what we're going to do in a few seconds. Underneath there is open a virtual machine. What this link allows you to do is to add a virtual machine into your VMware player environment if it already exists on your computer or we could upgrade to VMware Workstation, which is something you may want to consider if you are going to have a lot of guest operating systems and you want to snapshot those operating systems. What snapshotting allows you to do would be to restore to previous versions or configurations for various testing or development reasons. And then there's a help navigation. We're going to go ahead and click on create a new virtual machine. When we create a new virtual machine, a wizard appears and it needs to understand where the operating system installation files are located. And the options would be either from an installation disk, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, so I have a DVD-ROM in my DVD drive, which has the Windows 7 media on it. Or you can use an installer disk image file called an ISO file and these could be obtained from downloading them off of the internet such as Microsoft's website and telling VMware Player where that file is located so it will use that file as the installation source. Since I've got a DVD-ROM in the DVD drive I'm going to go ahead and specify an installer disk and this is the correct path so I'll click Next. Now Windows installation is trying to gather some additional information such as a Windows product key. I'm going to leave mine blank because I do not intend on activating this operating system. This is for education reasons only and studying in my own home lab environment. If I leave this blank I can still install Windows but I'll only be able to use it for 30 days before it expires. The version of Windows I'm going to install today is Windows 7 Ultimate. I need to personalize Windows by giving it a name, so I'm going to call it BK-CL1, CL for client, and I'm going to give it a password. And then I'm going to click on Next. I get a warning message, you did not enter a Windows product key, Windows will install without one but must be manually activated later. Would you like to continue? Yes, that's on purpose. And now I need to give my virtual machine a name, so I'm going to call it BK-CL1 and the location of this virtual machine will be on the C drive in the users folder and then in my user accounts private location called BK Lab, and then inside of my documents in a folder called virtual machines and a final folder called BK-CL1. So I click on next and then I need to specify how I want to store this virtual machine, specifically what's the maximum disk size, and by default it's set to 40 gigabytes. That's fine for what I'm going to be doing and how I'm going to be studying. I'm not going to be adding photos or music, so I'm not really concerned about the disk space. If this were for other reasons, I may want to consider increasing that, because 40 gigabytes is not a lot of disk space for Windows 7. And then I can designate if I'd like to store this as a single file or if I want to store my virtual disk into multiple files. Multiple files allows me to break it down into smaller segments and each segment could be put onto a DVD-ROM which might make it easier for moving the virtual machine to a different computer. I don't really care about that so I'm going to have one large file, a single file, and then I'm going to click Next. So now I have a summary page that the name of my operating system is BK-CL1. Here's the location. It's a workstation operating system that's Windows 7 x64. It's 64-bit. The hard disk is 40 GBs. The memory allocated to this virtual machine is 1024 MBs, uh, known as 1 gigabyte. And I've got NAT networking and some additional devices. Well, 
I'd like to have two gigs of memory and I don't want NAT networking. I want host networking or private networking because this is a lab environment and I do not want it to access the internet. So I'm going to customize hardware and you'll see in here that memory is 1024 MBs. I'm going to increase that to 2048 which is 2 gigs. <clears throat> I have one processor, I've got a DVD drive, I've got a floppy drive, and my network adapter is NAT. I don't want it to be NAT, I want it to be host only. So my virtual machines will be able to communicate with one another on their own private network and they will not be able to access the internet and the internet won't be able to access them. This way I don't need to worry about viruses and other malicious things from the internet in my virtual lab environment. So I always choose host only. Those are the only settings I want to make today. If I wanted to make settings to USB controllers, sound cards, printers, or displays, I certainly could do those at this point in time also. I'm going to click OK and go back to my virtual machine wizard and uh, understand that the check marks on power on this virtual machine after creation is selected because I would like to power on my virtual machine and start the installation process. So you will see that it wants to add some hardware and I don't really want the software updates right now either so I'm going to go ahead and close this and get into the Windows 7 installation. You'll see that Windows is loading files just like it would be if we were installing Windows 7 onto physical equipment, which we're not, but the installation of Windows 7 on a physical computer versus in a virtual machine is identical from this point forward. It doesn't really matter if you have a bunch of physical computers lined up to do your labs anymore. You can do all your testing in a virtual environment and save space and power. Because the VMware configuration wizard walked us through the name of the computer, the size of the disk, and where we were going to save things, we didn't get prompted for any of the normal Windows installation uh, settings. So uh, things are just going to continue on without interruption. This is going to reboot a couple of times as the installation progresses, just like a real computer. So. Uh, I'll let you get back to the show. Okay, you will see that the installation is complete. It's rebooted several times and now it's brought me to a login screen. So I'm going to go ahead and log in to BK-CL1. So we're logging in and it's preparing my desktop for first use. Now we have a desktop environment and I can click inside of my virtual machine and I can click on the start button and have a full suite of applications available for my use. So this concludes the demonstration on how to install Windows 7 in a VMware player virtual environment. Thank you for watching and I hope you continue to watch videos produced by BrickHouseLabs.com. Thank you and have a great day.